Welcome to Dialogue. Japan sa still says it will hold the Tokyo Olympic Games even as the nation battles a fourth wave of COVID-19 infections. And Tokyo remains under state of emergency until the end of this month. With the rising opposition from the public and surging cases, will the Games be hosted as expected? How will they be affected if they go ahead? And how will the COVID-19 era Olympics be celebrated and remembered? To discuss these issues and more, I'm joined by Liu Zhiqin, Senior Fellow from the Chongyang Institute for Financial Studies at Renmin University of China, Victor Matheson, Professor of Economics at the College of the Holy Cross, and Benoit Hadi Shachuang, Adjunct Professor of Political Science and International Affairs from Temple University in Japan. That's our topic. I'm Xu Qinduo. Well, a recent news poll uh, released on May 16th shows that almost 60% of people in Japan believe the Tokyo Olympics and the Paralympics should be cancelled. Uh, so, Zhiqin, I will start with you. Why the sour mood with uh, the Olympic Games? You know, the, this question has been lasting for many months in Japan and also in international society because many people are doubts and uh, skeptic whether the Olympic game can be really smoothly uh, hold it uh, in as planned. As we know that the Olympic game already extended uh, one year later to this year. So, but uh, the pandemic outbreak in Japan is not well managed and controlled and still they are facing a serious challenge for the new outbreak. So many people are worried about the uh, possible uh, consequences if the Olympic game uh, still in time to to be held to, because the infection rate is not well controlled in Japan. This is uh, disappointed the whole world, even in the social society in Japan. So that's why the people that uh, always uh, the opinion so divided at the moment. So uh, we can see that almost 60 percent are against uh, to hold this uh, uh, event but the only 39 they agree but uh, they prefer to have the empty the uh, stadiums that uh, no no visitors no audience uh, at site so this could be a really a, a great challenge for the government to make a final decision but uh, we see that uh, these uh, challenges could be really well discussed and solved among the public opinions if they really pay great attention to the people's life if the people's lives are really uh, uh, rescued or secured by the Japanese government decision. It could be very positive for the future of Japan society, but uh, we have to see the economic losses could not be uh, avoided. So if the cancellation of the Olympic game is to come to the truth, that a uh, big burden for the uh, Japanese economy. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Benoit, you are based in Tokyo. Uh, so we see the protest uh, uh, on the streets, you know, people are not happy, people are calling for the cancellation, some say we should delay again. Uh, it's different from last year. Last year, you know, many countries uh, you know, ahead of the, uh, the event saying that, oh, we are not sending a delegation because of the situation. But this year, let me few countries have done that. So why people are so worried about the event? Well, as the previous guest uh, rightly pointed out, the situation at the moment, the, uh, the, the pandemic is really bad. We are right in the middle of the fourth wave at the moment. The numbers have been trending up over the last few days. Um, so even though overall Japan, since the beginning of the pandemic, has done fairly well, it has done better than most Western countries, uh, the trends, the trend line has been pointing in a, in a negative direction recently. Uh, just over the last uh, seven days, the average in Tokyo only has been around uh, almost 800 new infections per day, which is a lot higher than we had at the beginning of the year when the first when the second state of emergency story was uh, implemented so now that we have we are only 70 days or approximately 70 days before uh, the opening of the games this uh, surge in infections over the last few days and also the very slow rollout of the vaccination of the vaccines um, all of that combined together um, basically they basically 
you know, combine to create this movement of opposition. And this opposition, I must say, is not only limited to the public, you see it as well in the uh, in the political sphere as well. The opposition parties are very much opposed to the uh, the games. You have very se various sectors of society that are now kind of uh, coalescing or concerting in opposition to the uh, to the games. Mm -hmm. uh, well, or indeed, uh, if you look at the figures, uh, like in the first uh, quarter, basically uh, three months, you see the death toll of COVID-19 is already larger than the total number of last yeah. year. Um, so you know, the Japanese Prime Minister Suga has uh, said that he's committed to a safe and a secure Olympics. Uh, so what has the government been doing to inspire confidence in the public? Well, there has been a few things that the government has done to inspire uh, confidence. First of all, the measures that will be in place during the Olympics are quite important. Um, as uh, most people are probably aware by this time, uh, the government has now announced that there will not be any spectators from abroad uh, coming for the Olympics. It will be limited to the athletes as well as some media. Um, as when it comes to um, foreign, not foreign, but domestic spectators, residents from Japan, the decision remains to be taken. So. As far as the public is concerned, as far as the environment within the stadiums, within the uh, places of comp competition, it will not be a, a normal Olympic. On top of that, there are various measures that will be taken at, uh, at the event sites. So we're talking about uh, disinfection, of course. We're talking about uh, temper temperature uh, checks as well. Uh, they have made sure to have a large number of nurses and medical professionals coming in from various parts of the country in Tokyo. So the government seems to have taken a lot of uh, steps and measures to ensure the confidence of the public and the possibility of holding safe games. But as mentioned in my previous response to your question, uh, so far the public doesn't seem to be responding very positively despite uh, these uh, drastic uh, steps and measures, including, by the way, the fact that many events have been canceled. Ceremonies, uh, various like the rally of the torch, for example, many parts of the rallies have been canceled or diverted. So many things have been done, but not yet a very positive response from the public. Mm -hmm. Well, to be fair, you know, Japan is one of the Asian countries uh, which have seen uh, you know, a surging uh, situation, like uh, in Southeast Asian countries, of course, you know, from India to uh, Malaysia, Thailand, etc., Singapore. Um, so you cannot blame, I would say, Japanese government. That's not really fair. But again, if you look at the vaccination, uh, the rate of vaccination in Japan is only 3% of its population. So it's really not that, uh, I mean, encouraging. Why is that, uh, you know, what the government has been doing? So when it comes to the vaccination, so indeed 3% have been vaccinating, but, uh, vaccinated, but uh, if you look at people who are completely immunized at this point, it's not even 2%. We're talking only about 1.3%, which is much, much lower than what we have seen in other countries, in Western countries, or in China for that matter. And there are various reasons for that, although it's quite surprising given the fact that the, the Olympics will be held this year in Tokyo, you would have thought, or one would have thought that the governments would have done a better um, effort to roll out the vaccine quickly. But there are two main reasons to explain why the vaccination has not gone as fast as most people would have hoped. One is the fact that Japan does not manufacture its own vaccines. Uh, that means that it has to import all of the vaccines. And additionally, um, as well, even when the vaccines have already been approved abroad, there needs to be the government uh, request or demands that there are further clinical trials conducted in Japan. So combine these two factors together and it results in the current situation where not even 2% of the population is fully, fully immunized and they're barely starting, they're, they're still haven't completely vaccinated the elderly uh, population. So that is quite a scandal here. It's quite controversial. And many people in the media and in my own uh, entourage, the people that I know in my community, very, very um, disappointed and angry at the government for the way the rollout has, uh, has gone on. Mm -hmm. Well, Victor, you are based in Boston, you know, looking at the events um, you know, unfold, unfolding in, the, uh, in Japan, looking at that from afar. Zhi uh, Qian, again, uh, to you here, the question, you're looking at the situation in Japan, are you confident personally, okay, the um, you know, Olympic Games should go ahead uh, as planned in later June next month? Zhi Qian? Yeah. yeah. Hello, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I believe that uh, for this uh, government has two difficulties uh, situation to 
just first of whether they can convince the, the, the people to have uh, vaccinated and the second is also the personal decision for the Japanese society whether they are really eager to do it because uh, they have different opinions and the data from the international society especially from European countries also from the United States some people still believe that the vaccination is not so well prepared uh, a good tool for prevention of the uh, the, uh, the, dynamic, the, the dynamic the outbreak of this uh, pandemic. So in this way that the social confidence is really very important factor for the uh, for this uh, situation. But I hope that uh, nowadays that uh, the time is very pressing for the Japanese government and also for the society. They sh should know what is really needed to do to be done. Mm -hmm. And also for for the life secure, they should do um, a faster and a qualified vaccination. This is not only for the Olympic game, this is also for the future uh, safety of the Japanese society and the even economic development. Mm, probably a more aggressive uh, manner over there. Uh, but That's if you true. look at the latest figure, the economic figure, for example, Zhi Qin, uh, the Japanese economy contracted uh, at an annual rate of 5.1% <coughs> in the first quarter, January to March. You know, household uh, spending consumption also dropped. Uh, obviously, mm. I'm wondering you know, how might these figures, you know, not, not that inspiring, let's say, uh, might affect the Japanese efforts, uh, you know, preparing uh, for the stage of this event? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a big uh, problem for the uh, Japanese uh, economy, e even for the enterprise. Yeah. This, uh, this afternoon, I had a discussion with uh, Japan, Japanese banks in Beijing. Also, we are informed that all these uh, Japanese banks and the enterprise, yeah, they are already uh, preparing for the online business. Uh, they also upgrade their facilities to work at home and also try to uh, stimulate and promote more consumption for the uh, economy. But uh, at the moment, uh, they need uh, some time also to digest uh, the situation, also to digest uh, the state the policy, whether they should go in, in this uh, direction. Because nowadays, they have uh, the opinion divided in the society. One pe some still believe that they can do the best uh, as the other countries. And the, uh, but the, some people, they are skeptic that uh, uh, the government is not qualified and uh, loses the best opportunities and the chances that uh, to prevent the uh, pandemic outbreak. So that's why this uh, uh, opinion should be combined, should be unified. Otherwise, the, all the efforts will be divided in the society. This is not good for the Japanese uh, society, even very bad influence for this uh, Olympic game. Nowadays, if they really want to host the Olympic game in time, they should hold the society, should concentrate its all efforts to prevent, to prepare, and to do the best job for the Olympic game. Also try to be make this Olympic game as the best one during the uh, dynamic outbreak. Maybe this is a good uh, historical experience for all countries in the future in the natural disasters, how to organize an Olympic game. This is also a good lesson and a good experience for the Japanese government, also the people. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Benoit, obviously, uh, you know, the economic figures, you know, like household spending consumption uh, is closely related to the restrictions being imposed by the government, you know, uh, because it's an emergency state which will last until the end of this month. Uh, we don't know, like, what will, hap what will happen in two weeks' time uh, whether the emergency state will be extended again, you know, how will the situation be like in June? I mean, how confident are you? You are in, in Tokyo, you look at the numbers, obviously that's not the, that uh, just, you know, encouraging, as Jishin said, but this could be an opportunity to make it a historical event. No, absolutely. And this is why a lot of people are hoping that the state of emergency that is currently ongoing will be lifted at the end of, of May. But already there have been some extensions uh, just over the last few days. The state of emergency has been uh, extended to many more prefectures. We uh, Prefectures in Japan, I believe we are now at nine prefectures that are under the state of emergency. And this has obviously worried a lot of people because if at the end of the month uh, the government uh, believes that the state of emergency must 
to be extended once more, that will continue to call, e to call into question even further the capacity of the government to hold these games. So I think what we are seeing at the moment is a kind of last ditch attempt by the government to, through the state of emergency, uh, bring these numbers, bring the figures, the number of infections uh, low enough so that there is at least a minimal uh, public confidence in the capacity of, uh, of the government, uh, capacity of the organizing committee to hold Olympics, the Olympics in a uh, safe manner. Because so far, as I said earlier, it's not really trending in the right direction. Uh, the economic numbers, as you very rightly pointed out earlier as well, are not trending in the right direction. Uh, the lockdowns, or I wouldn't really call it a lockdown because in Tokyo, uh, unlike what we have seen in many Western cities or in China for that matter, uh, we have not been able to, the government has not been able to impose a strict lockdown. But nonetheless, the fact that there are restrictions right now, the fact that the numbers are rising, this indeed contributes to uh, lower consumption and has contributed directly to the uh, the contraction of the economy by 5.1%. Um, and anecdotally, it's obvious around me, I see a lot of people who are obviously worried about the virus and decide not to hold any kind of events, not to go to restaurants, uh, not to meet in public, and that goes a long way towards explaining uh, the, uh, the, the economic figures and also so the opposition of the public. Mm -hmm. uh, now we are joined by Professor Victor Matherson from uh, Boston. Uh, so Victor, uh, the Olympic Games were supposed to boost the uh, economy of Japan or for the city of Tokyo for that matter. Uh, so now because of the obviously the absence of the audience and also the streamlining of the delegation from different countries uh, because of the outbreak, uh, uh, so economically speaking, break down for us how will the event you know, impact the economy here? So I think what's really important to understand here is that even before COVID hit, this was a deeply troubled uh, Olympic Games from an economic standpoint. The original $7.5 billion uh, budget had already ballooned to an official number of twice that. And unofficially, most people were uh, thinking that the cost had already risen to about uh, $25 billion. Uh, in some ways, COVID makes this much worse because it adds about $3 billion of cost and probably eliminates at least $2 billion of revenue uh, that Tokyo was planning on gaining from ticket sales and from tourism. Uh, but that's only about a $5 billion hit from COVID uh, on a game that was already about $15 billion over budget. So, uh, you know, this, is, uh, this, this certainly doesn't help. Uh, but this was, a, again, a deeply troubled game way before COVID caused anything to happen here. And, again, when you're talking about the sort of numbers uh, here, you're talking about a couple billion dollars in potential tourism uh, that's lost. When you compare that to the size of the greater Tokyo economy or the uh, overall Japanese economy, uh, you know, $10 billion is about one-tenth of one percent of the Japanese economy. So the Olympic Games are gigantic symbolically. Uh, but in, in terms of uh, actual economic impact, it, it's, it's fairly small. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Victor, there. Uh, Benoit, if you look at the, um, you know, the measures already been taken, for example, uh, no, uh, you know, no t audience from other countries uh, to join the game, to watch, and also tourists from other countries, uh, uh, what uh, you know, can the IOC and Tokyo do more? Uh, to ensure uh, the event will go ahead as planned, for example, social distancing or vaccination for the athletes from other countries? Right. Well, I don't think, to be very honest, that there is that much more that the Olympic Committee, the uh, organizing committee in Tokyo, or the government, or the I IOC can do to ensure uh, safer games than the measures that have already been taken. I think the only other step that is likely to happen if the current uh, infection trends continue uh, in the same direction is going to be that uh, even uh, Japanese or residents of Japan will not be able to attend uh, these games. So I think that's probably a step we're going to take. But other than that, there have been already so many restrictions that have been, uh, that have been implemented, so many events surrounding the Olympic Games that have been canceled. Normally at this time of the year in Tokyo, we would have 
entertainment all around the city to kind of, you know, whip up the atmosphere, uh, try to, to bring an atmosphere, a kind of Olympic fever in the city. We are not seeing any of that right now. The city, I mean, if you walk around the city, except in some neighborhoods, you would never guess that Olympics or the biggest sporting event in the world would happen within, you know, 70 days, less than three months away. Um, so already you can see that the, the atmosphere has been very dampened. Um, on the site itself, you mentioned social distancing. For sure, the government has already talked about uh, implementing these uh, such measures for athletes as well. But there's a limit to what you can do. We're talking about athletes from all over the world. Um, I, I think it's a few, 15,000 or something like that, number of athletes that are going to be in Tokyo uh, with their teams as well. There are limits to the kind of distan uh, distancing that can be imposed in such uh, environments. Um, for sure, the we are hoping that the all athletes are going to be vaccinated, but it's not clear that this is going to be possible before they arrive in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. So while a lot of measures have been uh, taken, um, you know, there's still this possibly, uh, it's really impossible make, basically to make sure that is going to be 100% safe under the current uh, mm -hmm. circumstances. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Jiqian, politics here, you know, with uh, this uh, election upcoming in autumn, uh, how might this uh, Olympic Games, you know, it's a success or not? Uh, may affect the results. Uh, you know, the government must have that uh, fact also in their mind. Well, we have to say that uh, this uh, impact will be very great to the autumn election in Japan. But no matter how uh, succeed or how uh, translation of this uh, Olympic game uh, sh should be uh, one important factor that uh, to influence the result of the election. But at the moment, we see the the poll for the Suga is uh, is lower than ever before. There's 40 percent, as we know that. So he has some difficulties that uh, to deal with the election, whether his party and he himself could be re-elected uh, during the uh, autumn election. But at the moment, he has still has some time that to to be well performed. For instance, especially the Olympic game is the is a test book for him. He should try to be uh, showing that he, his uh, governance and his qualification uh, for the uh, event is well known and well accepted by the uh, Japanese society, especially also one f important factor to promote the Japanese uh, economy. So in this way, for the uh, election, I mean that uh, this uh, Olympic game will be one of the decisive factor to influence the result. Uh, at the moment, I personally is uh, pessimistic for the sugar, whether he could win and could be re-elected. This is really in question. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Victor, you mentioned about the impact uh, of the games on the economy would be minimum, basically. Um, what about uh, those, uh, uh, you know, companies, firms, the business community, obviously, they would love the, the event go, to go ahead. And what are sponsors like uh, TV, you know, channels? So and, and athletes, of course, you know, if the event will be cancelled, so all of them will will suffer from that that kind of situation. Yeah, so this is deeply disappointing for the athletes, for sure. Remember, when you're an athlete, your uh, prime era, your prime time to be able to compete uh, can be very, very short, and this may be your one chance to compete in the Olympics. Uh, and this is uh, particularly important for those athletes not in the, you know, not in the big popular sports. You know, we're not worried about LeBron James or Serena Williams or Naomi Osaka here. We're worried about uh, those athletes in, uh, who are rowers or, uh, or in judo and weightlifting. This is one of their uh, only opportunities uh, to really get on a world stage and earn those uh, large sponsorship contracts. In terms of the companies themselves, obviously, again, certain sectors uh, are going to be deeply hurt by this. You know, t uh, tourism and hospitality uh, in, in a time where, you know, hotels have already been decimated across the world and other, uh, other types of transportation uh, decimated across the world. So this is not good for them at all. In terms of the large companies, the, the Budweiser's and the Coca-Cola's, uh, obviously, they'll be able to take this in stride. Uh, but, uh, you know, when it comes down to the, the final piece here, is that it's really the IOC who wants to push this, right? Because their entire revenue depends on those international sponsors. 
plus the three weeks of television that they can sell during the event. And uh, this is their only source of revenue over, the, over a four-year period. Uh, so if the games were canceled, this would essentially eliminate all of the money coming into the IOC. So you can understand the uh, sort of pressure that the IOC is placing on the local host committee to make sure the games go on so those sponsorship money keeps flowing into the IOC along with the big television revenues. Mm. So, Benoit, obviously there's a contract between IOC and Tokyo, the city over there. Uh, most people would say IOC has the final decision whether the event should be cancelled or not. Uh, so, you know, take all the factors, the politics, economics, and the, of course, the contract over there, into consideration, um, you know, how likely the event will be cancelled or be delayed again? I think it's very unlikely that there is be that there will be any cancellation or any further delay, and the reasons are those that you just uh, just pointed out. So mostly because of the contract. So it's been long understood that there could be only uh, a one year delay, and time and time again, the Olympic Committee, the organizing committee in Tokyo, the government has said that it could not be pushed uh, to uh, another year later. Even though now, according to the latest surveys, uh, the one that came out on Monday, 80 percent of the population is opposed to. Olympics being held this August. Uh, so contra contractually, contractually uh, sorry, Tokyo would be saddled with huge costs if it decided to cancel the games. Because yes, according to the contract, the IOC is the only entity can that can take uh, this decision. Of course, Tokyo or the government here could say that we're not holding the Olympics this year, but they would be saddled with these costs uh, because according to the contract, uh, there are obligations in terms of the revenues uh, that the IOC will make. Uh, the previous guest mentioned, for example, the broadcasting revenues. So Tokyo is going to be saddled with these costs. And when you put this in context, it helps to explain why the Japanese governments, despite the, the headwinds and despite the massive opposition from the, from the public, has continued with steadfast determination to hold these Olympics. Because although the Olympics, yes, it is true, they have relatively minimal advantages economically for the city, uh, for the country as a whole, uh, the, the, the cost of canceling them would still be very high. And it's also a matter of, uh, you know, of pride, too, as well. It's such mm -hmm. Uh, you know, the eyes of the world are going to be on Tokyo, and canceling these games would be seen as a kind of massive failure by the government, the organizing committee, and many of the people surrounding the games. So it really helps to explain why, really, they seem to be going full speed ahead despite the challenges. Mm -hmm. Well, China is also preparing for the 2022 Beijing <laughs> Winter Olympics. Uh, uh, so, Victor, economically and also in terms of preparation, uh, what China can learn from the Tokyo Olympics here? Well, so China's in, in pretty good shape, or at least much better shape than Japan is, for a, a handful of reasons. Obviously, uh, the extra six months makes a huge amount of difference, right? Uh, if I'm sitting here in the United States, literally zero people were vaccinated in the United States six months ago, and now we're already sitting at over 50%. So six months makes a huge amount of difference. And of course, uh, China, as, uh, as well as the United States and the UK and some other countries, have done a much better uh, job in their vaccination programs than Japan has so far. Uh, other things that Japan has going for it is that the, uh, the Winter Olympics are a much smaller event with fewer athletes uh, coming from predominantly rich Western nations that are most, more likely to be vaccinated in the first place. And the last thing that China has done fairly well uh, is that it's really kept the cost down. Now the, uh, now, the Summer Olympics a decade ago were extraordinarily expensive in Beijing, uh, but this time through it looks like the Winter Olympics will come in at a cost of roughly one-tenth what the Summer Olympics uh, came through uh, a decade ago. And, and so that means that unlike Japan uh, and Tokyo, which was sitting at about a $25 billion bill for this Summer Olympics, uh, the Winter Olympics is looking like about a $4 billion bill. And that, of course, is going to make uh, the, uh, the, both the local governments and the local citizenry uh, much happier about hosting the event because mm -hmm. uh, uh, not as much of their money is on the line as we see in Tokyo. Seems so we should be more confident about the Winter Olympics. Uh, well, thank you. With that, we are coming to the end of today's show. Many thanks to our guests again. You can also watch us on the CGTN app or on YouTube. I'm Xu Qinduo. You can find me on Twitter, Xu Qinduo, one word. Thanks for watching. See you next time.